White Centipede Noise podcast is made possible by your support via Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash white centipede noise to support and stay tuned to hear about the exclusive benefits and bonus content available with this episode. White Centipede Noise is a label and mail order specializing in noise, power electronics, and industrial music. You can find underground items by many of the artists featured on this podcast in our extensive distro. We ship internationally and update with new stock regularly. Check out what's currently available at whitecentipedenoise.com. Welcome to White Centipede Noise Podcast. I'm Oscar Brummel, and today my guest is Gabriele Giuliani of Dead Body Love, a highly influential mid-90s Italian harsh noise project, as well as the dark ambient project Drift and power electronics project Discordance. He also ran the label Less Than Zero, responsible for releasing many utmost classics of the era. His Dead Body Love material has recently been reissued on labels such as Input Error, Phage Tapes, Tribe Tapes, Tronics, and Chondritic Sound. Gabriele Giuliani. Perfect pronunciation. <laughs> Flawless. Thank you so, so much for agreeing to come talk to me on White Centipede Noise Podcast. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, our viewers must know that uh, at first I said no to this because uh, my English is far from perfect. <laughs> but... But uh, I if I get stuck in... with uh, with words uh, or uh, verbs, uh, I just rely on hand gestures. I'm Italian, yeah, so the Italian way, anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, Somehow, I I I'm glad I was persistent. I usually like I usually like to respect people's um, wishes if they if they say no, thank you to to an invitation to be on the podcast. I usually like to say okay, I respect that, but I'm. I had a feeling that you, you, your English was actually quite good. So I, I was glad. I'm glad I was persistent and, and convinced you. And I thank you for, for doing this. This is a big, big thing for all harsh noise fans, all noise fans. This is a for, for me personally a really exciting chance to talk to you and uh, hope people out there, there I know they're <laughs> going to be glad thank to hear you. from me too. So, thank you. Yeah. So um, your projects you have numerous projects which we're going to talk about dead body love is the project that i'm most familiar with and it seems to be your most prof- prolific project mm-hmm. um you also have recorded under drift and yes. discordance as well as a few other projects mm-hmm. which we'll get to that i would like to just first of all talk to you because you're from the older generation of you know, you were active really in the mid '90s when this, you know, "quote unquote" golden age of harsh noise was happening across the world. Um, so I like to. I, I oftentimes ask people, "How do they get into noise?" And with younger people, it's maybe the same kind of story. Oh, I was into punk, and then I saw this on the internet, and then I got into noise. But you are of that older generation that I think it would be very interesting to know particularly how you discovered noise in the first place and what your gateway to it was and then what made you want to get involved and make your own noise after discovering it. So if you could just kind of give me your background. Mm -hmm. I have something here. The the very first time I heard about noise, Japanese noise exactly, was on this issue of this magazine called Rumore. It's a um, quite mainstream magazine. Uh, it's still uh, active in Italy. One of the most popular uh, Italian magazines about music. So very mainstream, in Suede on the cover. Yeah. And this is uh, April 1993. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So a um, lot of time ago, 30 years. Hmm. Time runs. And they and, had an uh, article about Japanese noise or? Yes. This. Noise Japan. Wow. With uh, Kazuyuki Null. Wow. And I never heard about this. 
This is the very first time. Wow. Um, this is Aino Keiji, the yeah. Tetsuo cover. And we have Gero uh, Geri <laughs> Gegege. Cool. <laughs> Zenigeva. And uh, I read this article. And when you never listen to, have never listened to noise, you just can't understand just reading. So I was very curious about that. Uh, before this, I never did anything uh, except playing uh, bass guitar. Uh, uh, I never learned music. I just learned, uh, memorized uh, the songs. So yeah. nothing big. And uh, we did the usual covers, Black Sabbath, Metallica, Venom, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But uh, I, I never found uh, the, the right people to play with because they were shocked because uh, I played bass with a pick mm -hmm. and with distortion. <laughs> and this is blasphemy for, for the best player. You, you must play best with your fingers. Yeah. Uh, so. Why did they, you do they, that? They, Where they did you get shocked. that idea? Uh, because my, my favorite bass players uh, were uh, Danny Licker of Nuclear Assault. He, mm -hmm. he did uh, Brutal Truth. Uh, he was in SOD in yep. the first uh, Anthrax album. Kronos uh, <laughs> of Venom. And most of all, Blackie of Voivod. And he used a very heavy distortion. Uh, they, they were great. They were great. So uh, I, I never found uh, anybody that was interested in this. Uh, most of my friends like metal, but more traditional. Yeah. If uh, if I say may say so. So when I when I read this article, uh, I, I had to to understand what was going on in Japan. Yeah. Um, and there was a shop, uh, a record shop in Pisa that was called Wide Records. It was also a label, very good label, small, but they released, uh, for example, uh, a couple albums of a Croatian band named Transmisia. Mm -hmm. uh, they were excellent. I saw them live, a uh, hammer. Um, Metal band? Like, uh, uh, pff, no, not metal. Like uh, the first helmet album. Okay. To, to give you an idea, but mm -hmm. much more uh, violent. Okay. Great cool. band. And, and they started to keep uh, in, the, in the shop uh, Japanese noise. Cool. Uh, I think in 1994, uh, Relapse uh, uh, did the Vineriology album by, by Merzbo. Yep. So, 93, 94. I, I started to, to follow these uh, this kind of things. And anyway, I, I was already interested in, uh, in ambient music. Okay. Uh, the classic, Brian Eno. Yep. But uh, I, I was mm, fixated, I say, with uh, Lal. Uh, it was Mick Harris' uh, ambient project. Mm -hmm. He did the three albums on an English label named Centrax. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, they, they blew my mind the, the, yeah. those albums were, were incredible uh, because the, the, the very first thing uh, I, I did for uh, Slaughter Production for Marco Corbelli uh, was Drift yes. Ambient yeah then in the, in the same year I started also making noise uh, okay so this magazine um, wow no, really <laughs> this uh, this was the beginning of uh, of everything this article incredible really. <laughs> so so that's a point that I wanted to ask you about is the it it seems like Drift and Dead Body Love both had their first releases in the same year, right? Mm -hmm. 1995. 95. And directly on Slaughter Productions, Marco Cobelli's label was Drift. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I want to know kind of the the timeline for how you you kind of explained the timeline of how you started both those, but also how did you get in touch with Marco Corbelli and start working with him? Uh, one of my friends uh, uh, that live in Piombino, the, the, the small city you see in uh, the, the old uh, address on the, on the old tapes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, his name is Gianluca Becuzzi. Uh, I haven't seen him in, uh, in a lot of years, but I, I checked yesterday. He still does a lot of music. Uh, he makes uh, a lot of uh, a lot of CDs, and at the time he um, he played he sang in a in a band called Limbo. Uh, they were a goth industrial techno band, very cult band. 
but they're very much considered uh, in Italy. So uh, he, he is 10 years older than me. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had uh, a great uh, collection of records. Uh, and uh, I started to listen to the classics, uh, Trobby and Crystal, SPK, Coil, uh, White House. Mm, he, he had a lot of records. Uh, and he uh, told me about Marco Corbelli. I don't remember how he met him, but he told me there's this guy that does this, uh, these tapes, uh, very, very beautiful package. Mm. And he has this weird project uh, named Atrax Morg. So mm -hmm. write to him. Uh, I did. Uh, <laughs> so I sent him the, 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 the first uh, ambient uh, recordings I did. Uh, he, he liked it very much. So cool. he released the, the first uh, drift tape. Did you ever meet him in person? Uh, yes, twice. The, the second was uh, one of his concerts. He played live and I, I met him there. Uh, the first, uh, he came to visit me. Hear Gabriele talk about the time Marco Corbelli visited him at his home in the extended segments of this interview at patreon.com slash white centipede noise. Who was active in that time in terms of scene? I mean, you, there was, of course... Marco Corbelli, there was Old Europa Cafe. In the mid-90s, though, who in that time were the kind of main players that are, were involved that you were in contact know. with in those early days? Uh, in contact in Italy? I really don't know. There was a murder corporation, right. Moreno Dal Dosso. But uh, he, he sent me a track for a compilation, for a tape compilation I did, but he, he was not one of my contacts. Okay. I just uh, contacted him for, for, this, uh, for this track. And uh, I don't know. I really don't know in Italy. I, I don't think there, there were others making noise, pure noise, like Japanese noise, except yeah. me. Because Murder Corporation was already something different. Right. Uh, Marco... Did other things with that yeah. uh, murder machine. Uh, uh, it was not pure pure noise, right? So there probably weren't also then a lot of other people, maybe fans or people who would listen to that stuff. I mean, did you get the sense that there was some sort of scene outside of those people that were making it? Like there were people that would order from you, or what in Italy? No, no, no. no. I. Um... I didn't know anybody else. I, I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. Uh, a friend of mine, Daniele, uh, who, who did some, uh, some uh, tapes uh, and surely one uh, LP and one seven inch under the name Diktat. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he lives in Pisa. Okay. Other than that, uh, zero. I, I really don't, don't know. Italy was not very... Uh, active in this uh, in this way, except the eighties um, right. people, the Sodality, Maurizio Bianchi, MB, uh, Mountausen Orchestra. What kind of connection do you have to that era of Italian power electronics and noise? Did did you were you familiar with that stuff when it was when you were young? Were you familiar uh, with it at that time in the mid nineties? Actually, I. I Except uh, MB, because I already had um, a symphony for a genocide. But uh, no, actually, I discovered them after I started making noise. Yeah. So, no, they, they were not an influence. Mm -hmm. As uh, early influences, I'd say Merzbo and mm -hmm. Control Bleeding. Mm. Uh, they have done a lot of different things yep. with percussion, ambient. But they also did some violent noise tracks very and i have another thing here yeah this this is dry lungs five uh -huh. it's a compilation and um uh, the the guys of control bleeding did that cool and it, this was uh, i think the 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 first noise uh, album it's a compilation but it's the first noise thing that i that i bought and it had uh, it has in it Amazonna, uh, Hijo Kaidan, Incapacitans, Merzbo, Solmenia, Violent Onsengation, Ulla. Wow. 
and also control bleeding and their other projects, uh, Skin Chamber, that was a sp- something like an industrial doom metal. They, they did two right. great albums. This cool. One. Did you pick that up in that record store that you told me about? Uh, yes. Um, maybe b- before uh, White Records, there was another shop named Gasoline. Uh, uh-huh. And the guy w- was unbelievable. Uh, I lost track of him. I don't uh-huh. know. He he closed the shop and he opened a restaurant in peace. <laughs> I went to <laughs> to eat there once. Uh, he, he was crazy. Crazy people about music. People that love music. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So I don't remember. Uh, I bought it in peace anyway. Very cool. The tower and the noise. Uh, nice. uh, so this, this has a great packaging. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Cool. Mm-hmm. Double CD. Very cool. So there's a description of every band. Wow. Great. That's brilliant. Mm-hmm. The very first uh, noise thing that I, that I bought, because this came out in 90, 92. 92, yes. Awesome. So before uh, venereology and before the drowning, that, that was the, the, the first uh, Control Bleeding album I, I bought. Cool. Mm-mm. So well, was there a specific moment or reason that you, when you discovered this music, that you were like, oh, I have to make this? Mm-hmm. Particularly the yeah. harsh, the harsh. I mean, dead body love. We talked about you talked about drift. You know, you're a fan of ambient music, but when you said dead body love, I'm going to start making really full on harsh noise. Uh, the 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 very first reason uh, for both for ambient and noise, because uh, the, the the reason I fell in love with these uh, with these things uh, is that uh, I could make them alone, yeah, <laughs> without anybody else. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, uh, other things I, I loved uh, at the time uh, were uh, Ministry, Nine Inch yeah. Nails, Ein uh, yeah. and Neubauten, uh, great band, but uh, the, they were bands. Right. Even though Trent Reznor did something uh, alone, the, the Broken EP, that's my favorite Nine Inch Nails mm-hmm. release, he made it uh, alone. Right. And I always... Uh, like this to to make music alone yeah because uh, as i told you before i i couldn't get along with uh, with others you know they were shocked uh, because i play bass with a with a pick uh, imagine uh, if i made them listen to incapacitance or, yeah or something like that well it sounds like you had a deep attraction in the beginning already to heavy distortion mm-hmm Oh yes. That maybe the band was just holding you back from what you were really yes, wanting to do. And then without the people you can then just run with it. There were um, a lot of, of bands uh, not strictly extreme, but uh, bands uh, who were uh, experimenting with uh, other things uh, or drum machines uh, or horns, uh, think of uh, cop shoot cop mm-hmm. or godflesh. Uh, yep ministry uh, the end of the 80s uh, and the first uh, half of the 90s uh, the incredible records of, of any kind yeah also purely rock music uh, in- incredible stuff jake's addiction uh, alice in chains uh, uh, the, the beastie boys uh, yep. crazy if you think about them the, the beastie boys made my favorite rap album Ever Paul's Boutique in yeah. uh, '89, wow. and it, it's an incredible album. Cioè, yeah. uh, anyone who, who likes uh, electronic music should listen to that because yeah. it's credited as Beastie Boys, but the music has been done by the Dust Brothers. Uh-huh. Uh, they were the guys who did no, the no. Fight Club uh, soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost entirely made of samples from uh, other records. Yeah. Almost entirely, because in one song. Uh, they play drums, guitar, and bass. Yeah. Otherwise, it, it's all made like that with samplers. And I think uh, an album like that would be, would be impossible to to do today for rides uh, right. and stuff like that. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. Mm-mm. It's very true. So this period, uh, the end of the 80s, uh, beginning of the 90s, greatest music ever. 
Yep. And you're part of it too. I mean, you came on right at the end of the, I mean, you came on in the mid nineties, 95. I mean, that's still part of that lineage, I think. And, and then you are part of what many consider to be such an important part of noise music. I mean, that mm -hmm. maybe that was a response to the great music of the eighties and nineties that somehow oh, it yes. got brought to a new conclusion. I don't know with, with the mm -hmm. harsh noise that came out. So, so, so 95 is when you started, but, and, and you were on your label, Less Than Zero. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you released on Old Europa Cafe also. But by 96, you were on all, all of a sudden many, many international labels. Like mm -hmm. you went, seemed like a very quick jump. And you were so prolific and productive in those years between like 95 and 98. You had so many releases out. And I'm... First, I want to know, how did you make that connection to the international scene? Uh, it was thanks to Marco Corbelli. He told me about Mark Solotrov. Mm. And uh, I have uh, another thing here. Mark Solotrov, at the time, did this uh, newsletter that was called uh, The Rape of Angels. Wow. This was the old font uh, he used. This wow. is issue 8, uh, September 95. Wow. I kept all of this, of course. Wow. And then he changed to this more uh, modern uh, font. Yeah. Uh, this is issue 19, but I have uh, all, uh, all the, the wow. issues uh, <laughs> in between. My God. And he did this. Uh, it wasn't really a fanzine because uh, it was very, very short, like this. Just four, four pages. Wow. <laughs> but he had the uh, reviews of any kind of uh, extreme music. Uh, on, the, on the front page, uh, you have At the Gates and Atrax Morgue. <laughs> yeah, wow. And inside, uh, this member, uh, Eisenwater, do you know them? Uh, they, they were a very heavy German band. Uh, uh -huh. Drums, bass, guitar, but extremely heavy. Slow, cool. very violent. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Cool. Good. I, I have one of their uh, the records that's, that's called Just Three, and it's, it's the one I reviewed here. Cool. And then uh, Pain Jerk, Taint, uh, wow. Tribes of Neurot, Third Organ. So he, he did this. And he was starting to, um, to release a series of, uh, of tapes. Yeah. And this one uh, was uh, the... The first thing I think that came out uh, out uh, outside Italy with this wow. title, I, I don't know what was I thinking. You've got my corpse. <laughs> uh, it, it's one of the most stupid things I ever heard, and I did that. <laughs> so it, it's embarrassing. No, I, um, I, I was trying to to do something crazy like the Japanese. Uh, like uh, Anna Tarash, also yeah. Amazon, I had these weird titles. But this is really stupid. It's almost like, yeah, it's almost like Anna Tarash mixed with Atrax Morgue. Yeah, yeah something, <laughs> <laughs> something, something like that, but really, really idiot. Other titles, Puke, Not Nuke. <laughs> How did Puke, I not nuke, that's great. come up with that's that? Fetus for, for breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> That's cool, but you have some. That's a, those are great titles. I think you have some really good titles. You know, he sucks. Let's let's kill. I think is a good one. <laughs> no, uh, I should I shouldn't have done these uh, these things. Uh, I've done many different things with uh, their body love. Drift was much more focused. Yeah, uh, minimal covered uh, music artwork, uh, titles, it, it had a certain line, yeah. but uh, I, I made a mess with, uh, with the body love, but I was young, I was 20, 23, I was born in wow. 1973. That's very young. So, pff, ridiculous. Anyway, this was an Ooh. edition of uh, 50 copies, this yeah. is uh, number one. K killer. Wow, so great that you have that stuff so well ar archived everything. <laughs> how how old were 
people like Mark Solotroff or Marco Corbelli when you were doing this? Because you were in your early 20s. How old were those uh, types of people? I think, uh, I think Marco was uh, my age, maybe mm -hmm. a bit uh, older. I don't, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Solotroff, I don't know. I don't know how old uh, he is. Yeah. Mm -mm. Ah, he, he was one of the, the, the ones that really uh, lots of letters, uh, lots of communication yeah. with him. Uh, and then after he released that, uh, that tape, uh, I got in touch with uh, uh, Patrick of Self Abuse Records uh, right. uh, with Joe of uh, Macron Infa, yep. uh, Mother Savage Noise Productions, yep. and a lot. All the world. A lot, yeah, because. 1996, all of a sudden, you have so many releases on so many amazing <laughs> mm -mm. international labels. I think that's also even, you had a pure CD on Triple R. Oh, yes. Uh, in 1996 already, which is quite remarkable that it happened so fast. I, I didn't prepare this, but uh, it was here. Yeah. Uh, this cool. CD. Yeah, it's a great one. Awesome. Uh, it, it has been reissued with different cover, but the, this is one of the, the very first run. The originals. I have the... I have the version with the with the collage that oh, okay that Ron yes uh, much of the pure catalog has been reissued with the with that kind of cover yeah uh, good times I I don't remember which year this uh, came I out I thought I was looking at it yesterday and I thought it said ninety six and I was just thinking wow that's yeah, amazing man. that to go from nineteen ninety five your first tape to nineteen ninety six a, a CD <laughs> on on pure triple R because back then also CDs I think were much harder to produce. I, I imagine they took a bit longer than now. I mean, now it's pretty quick, but mm -hmm. that's a very, so it seemed like people were really discovering your stuff and then very quickly like, Whoa, I want to work with this guy. I want to release your shit. Like that seemed like it must've been mm -hmm. a very quick progression. No, actually I, I didn't realize I was doing something. Uh, I will not say new, but, uh, Personal, yeah. I didn't realize that, but um, really, um, if I listen to those uh, records today, I don't know. Uh, the, the, the Japanese were, were very different, except some incapacitance. The, the the early incapacitance material is like that repo. Yeah, those uh, the, the um, pariah tapes. Uh, Right, that were reissued by uh, Freak Animal, right. the, the five CDs. Yep. So it was very monolithic. I'd, yes. I'd say. Yeah. And the, the others were very, very different. So Mania had the, the guitar he. Yeah. <laughs> he built, and uh, Hijo Kaidan uh, was a band with yeah. uh, guitar, uh, electronics, uh, uh, vocals. Uh, uh, Mersbo was uh, different, sound collage. Mazonna was different. And your sound is so, like you said, monolithic and dense and crusty and crunchy. And I don't know what I don't know what if there was so much of that kind of stuff going on at that time. I mean, it. What was your mindset that? put you in, to focus so hard in that direction. I mean, there there was some, you know, American noise kind of had some of that crunchiness to it, but as far as I know, not that much was just so focused on that like your work is. What was your mindset? I, I don't think it was a conscious uh, decision to, to make something like that. Uh, but uh, I, I was just trying to do the, <laughs> the worst noise. <laughs> you could imagine. Uh, so the, I, I was influenced by some uh, some artists uh, uh, like uh, Jackson Pollock, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly Alberto Burri, mm -hmm. uh, Italian painter. Uh, he did some incredible stuff. He he used to burn the the canvas, uh, and use uh, paint, glue. Uh, tissues, uh, crazy. Uh, he he has been a very very big influence. The 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 few times that I I've seen his works uh, live, uh, I I felt the the need to to touch to to put my hands uh, on uh, on them. I wow. don't think it ever happened. Uh, 
Yes. And he was just destroying things as art. So texture must be a oh okay. yeah, a big yes, yes. for you. Yes, yes. And after when when we get to talk about my method of recording you. Yeah. You will understand better. <laughs> I, okay. I don't think I ever explained that. So Yeah, awesome. Oh well, yeah, I would love to hear that. <laughs> so so um I guess then let's 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 talk about that because that's definitely the next thing I wanted to ask you about is then can you talk about your method in recording? Because I mean I'm for example, I'm of a younger generation. I discovered your work when the reissue of Lo Fi Power Carnage came out in I think two thousand seven on Tronics mm -hmm. and um, Milit uh, Militant Walls. Yes. And that was a big uh, wake up for me, like a big a big epiphany with your work. <laughs> and I, I remember talking with other people when we were trying to think, what's going what's going on underneath there? There's some there's some musical elements, there's some loops, there's some melodies. What's what's going on here? What's he doing? <laughs> How does he get it so thick and crunchy? So please <laughs> Tell, I, tell us. I'll explain. How would you do what you did? Everything you just said uh, has, a, has a meaning. Yeah. You, you got it right. <laughs> so, now I'll explain. On the Patreon with this episode, there is, of course, the exclusive extended segment of the interview, which is available to all supporters at five euros a month. Gabriele has also shared a brand new Harsh Noise track with the Maniac Circle, which is available for download now. And for the heavy sponsors of Noise Fiends, I'm giving each supporter at that level one copy of one of the new reissue CDs while supplies last. So I've got Horrors of the Human Body, Stand in Blood, and Prayers for the Sick here. Destruction's Geometry will be here in a few days from Phage Tapes. They're all listed in the private Noise Fiends list, which you have access to. So just write me through there, and I'll get it sorted with your next order. I'm also working on a three to four CD compilation of artists that have been on the podcast for the first two years. It'll feature new and unreleased material from guests paired with excerpts from the interview, so showcasing their work directly with context from their own words. I'm sending the compilation to press only once the Patreon reaches 300 supporters, and those 300 copies will only be available to Patreon supporters. There's a really crazy RSVP list already of people who are participating, the tracks are already showing up, and the final lineup will be announced on October 18th, which will mark two years of the podcast. Hopefully we'll be at 300 members by then so I can put it right into production. So if you aren't currently a supporter, be sure you sign up now to make sure you get a copy. That's all just a taste of what's available on the Patreon, so head over to patreon.com slash noise now to check out everything that's available and find a level of support that fits you. Now back to Gabriele. Okay. This here is uh, the, the four-track recorder. Uh, everything I did at the time was done with that. Yeah. So, uh, the the first uh, thing uh, I did always was put <laughs> everything to maximum. Yeah. All these knobs, yep. high, lows, mid, yep. everything to maximum. Yeah. Th there's also something like a gain here. Yeah. Also. So everything to <laughs> until these uh, these meters here. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, there is no light. Yeah, uh, but I I, I, I can see. Until these uh, were completely red. Yes. <laughs> and not completely. moving. Not moving. Yeah. <laughs> so maximum red, yeah. everything on red. Yeah. So uh, when you when you do something like that, uh, every input is uh, is destroyed. But yeah. the the other thing I used was uh, you should say my floor here is, is full of is full of stuff. Uh, this one, this one is a, a multi-effect uh -huh. of an Italian brand called Viscount. They do mostly organs and mm -hmm. keyboards. Cool. To maximum, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and um, I, I found the right, uh, the right patch with the uh, distortion, uh, delay, reverb, uh, mm -hmm. uh, phaser. Uh, so combined a bit. Oh yes, yeah. I I found the, the the right amount of everything. Yeah. Anyway, full full distortion, full yeah. volume. Yep. And this is also the the other with, with the Tascam uh, I showed before. Yeah. This is the thing that that I use in every every release yeah. of the of the nineties. Everything is made with with that and the Tascam. Wow. And he, here is the the funny part. <laughs> What I used. This is going to be 
Great. <laughs> the Casio Tone. The VL1, I think it's name. This was the keyboard that the German band uh, Trio used. Da, da, da. Do you remember that song? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a, a huge hit also in Italy. Yeah. Early, early 80s. Wow. I was in elementary school. And it, 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 this uh, has horrible sound. I don't have the batteries inside. <laughs> <laughs> horrible sounds. Horrible. And uh, then named uh, uh, piano, violin, flute, guitar, but yeah. they, they don't sound <laughs> <laughs> anything like like this. And uh, this also had, um, oh, the display is fucked up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see. Uh, the magnet. This is very, very old. I think it's 40 years old, this, uh, wow. this thing. And uh, it has a very um, primitive synth. Mm -hmm. So I, I shoot noises from this into the, the multi-effect and, and the recorder. But not everything is done with, uh, with okay. this. The, the trick, the, the main uh, ingredient for, yeah. uh, for everything yeah. was a CD player that I... <laughs> that, that I still have a uh, Technics CD player uh -huh. and this had the, the phone's output uh -huh. with the volume knob so I also put that to, to maximum yeah. and simply I ran into the the, the multi-effect and the recorder something like that Grinker and death metal albums. <laughs> not not just playing. I hit play. Then yeah. I went for uh, all the duration of the tracks. Uh, fast forward and rewind. Yeah. So it was a uh, pure noise because the the CD player uh, made actually noise. Yeah. It, it was played uh, full uh, full speed. The one that I have uh, now uh, doesn't do this. Wow. When you hit uh, fast forward, yeah. you can hear anything. But it's like that sound like, where it goes quickly gl glitching through the through the tracks. Something like that. Fast wow. forward, rewind. So, wow. <laughs> so I recorded one track, another. At least uh, at least there were two two tracks. Sometimes uh, three. Yeah. And anyway, if you do this uh, with uh, with two tracks. Uh, yeah. You get uh, what you hear on the Dead Body Love release. Uh, wow. it, it becomes something uh, un unintelligible. Uh, it's uh, that texture, that, that noise, that continuous noise. Wow. So uh, in your email yesterday, yeah. uh, you mentioned something that I'm going to read. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is uh, you or, or someone asked you to to ask me this, uh, are there vocals on lo-fi power carnage? I yes. always feel like I can hear buried vocal lines, but maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me. Yes. <laughs> so maybe, I, I don't remember. I, I can't really remember. Maybe it was really me yeah. because I had a, a cheap, uh, cheap, very cheap microphone uh, and plugged into the multi-effect and the, and the recorder. Yeah. Everything went through, through this. Uh, and uh, I was just uh, oh, not really screaming, but uh, something yeah. like that. And the result, it was uh, it was not. So maybe it was me. Maybe <laughs> it, it was something from the CDs. Wow, really. that's incredible. What about all the <laughs> loops? I mean, were you doing loops on the CD player? Uh, no, um, I had also a Roland sampler. Okay. Te terrible hardware. Um, uh, I threw it away <laughs> some uh, years ago and um, yes uh, sometimes uh, I, I took uh, small loops in, in some releases it's very obvious uh, they're, they're made uh, of loops also the, the, the first track on the, um, the the CD on triple R it has a rhythmic noise uh, and right. it was no, no synth I had no synth but it was the the sampler I Interesting. Well, I'm still, I'm still worrying. I'm still thinking about some of the loops, like the loop that's on Lo-Fi Power Carnage. I think that first long track, it's like a repeating kind of odd melodies, like. <laughs> I, 
I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> <laughs> I try to to listen to it again. Yeah. Now, really, I don't know <laughs> what to say. I don't remember that. Great. Um, another thing I use, but if I remember, not in that body love, in uh, in drift, uh, a, a friend gave me two two CDs of um, of FX. I think it was something professional because uh, I, I remember this, there was a particular female scream. Mm. that I heard in lots of movies. So uh, I think it was something for uh, for movies, uh, for that. And I, I used them uh, a lot. Uh, I was taking sounds of uh, anything, motors or the wind, uh, mm, yeah. cars, uh, traffic. Uh, and w when you run them w w with the delays and reverb, uh, you, you can't really identify the 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 source the sure. the real sound did you have anyone that kind of showed you those techniques to start with oh, or wow. you thought oh someone's doing this <laughs> or you just come up with it 100 by yourself yes yes i i didn't know anyone who who was uh into this uh this stuff so i bought that uh recorder uh, I had to go to Siena. Uh, there was, uh, I think, there there still is a, a big, big uh, musical instruments shop. So everyone who needed something, uh, guitar, keyboard, sampler, uh, anything, uh, that that was the place to go. And uh, I I bought uh, uh, the, the the recorder, the Tascam, and the multi effect, and then I, I started to to experiment with the with noises and this uh, cd trick uh, i don't think anybody <laughs> realized that uh, because uh, you you can hear anything uh, all, all you can hear is noise but sometimes uh, uh, so maybe if you heard uh, these uh, vocals uh, maybe it was not me it was a uh, kevin sharp or brutal yeah. truth <laughs> No, that, that question, I, I, I asked people from the Patreon if they had questions for you. So I have a, quite a few questions that are from people, other people that want to ask you. That was from someone else. So I never n identified voice, but I n identified certain musical loops. And I was always wondering what that was. But everyone <laughs> hears something different, I suppose. Uh, let me know. If, if you listen to it again, uh, Yeah, I, I'll try to tell you more. Crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so fascinated, though, but that you came from such an isolated point in noise and really started doing something that was so unique. And because the, the relentless crunchiness, I mean, that sound has sort of become almost a genre of harsh noise. You know, this this heavy crunch. It's, of course, some people have even said that your work is kind of a precursor or influence to what later became, you know, harsh noise wall, where it's just no movement. But it's still fascinating that you came from just listening to Japanese noise and, and, and international noise like mm -hmm. that, but then came with something that that time was so, those, those tracks, those early tracks are so extreme in their monolithic texture. Mm -mm. Did you... Yeah. When you were creating them, do you do you remember at all like what was fascinating you about that? What you, what you were feeling at that time? Um, as I told you before, I, I didn't realize uh, I was making something uh, unique. I'd say yeah. uh, there's a Sam of uh, of the Rita. He he says uh, I created this kind of thing. Uh, uh, he has taken inspiration from uh, from my work. Uh, but I, I didn't realize at the time. Yeah. Now, in fact, if I listen to, to all these other issues that are coming out, uh, yes, at the time, uh, at least in Italy, uh, there were nobody doing something like that. Maybe in Europe, I don't know. In I Japan, don't think so. I mean, in America, I, it was full. 
I think in America, yes, but I still think your your approach was even more stripped down. I mean, it has some similarities mm-hmm. to like you know a lot of Richard Ramirez's work, um, maybe Mac or OBM, yeah. but still like the 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 focus your work has really on that minimalism and crunch and texture. I don't really know of anywhere else that someone has been so focused on that Mm -hmm. it's it's, it's incredible i'm glad about that i didn't realize that but uh, anyway it's a a kind of sound that you just can make forever i i started including different things uh, very soon very soon because uh things like uh, destructions geometry they came out uh, on CD, on fish tapes lately. Yeah. Uh, what can you do uh, the, when, when you've done something like that? Uh, it's pointless to, to, to do again and again right, the right, same right. thing. So, so I started to, to use the, the samples. Yeah, also this one I was forgetting. This is um, a theremin. Mm. This is oh, the cool. same that... Uh, Mayuko Ino of uh, CCCC used. Cool. This was exactly the same. And wow. Kazumoto Endo sent this to me. Cool. Um, I did something very, very stupid, but uh, it, uh, it went well. Uh, he told me about this. So I said, uh, I want one. Okay, uh, I think it was uh, $300. Yeah. Uh, I just went to the bank. I exchanged money. Uh, there was still the lira in Italy. Yeah. I changed the money and sent it in an envelope. I don't even remember if it was uh, registered or not. But it really stupid. Now with to Japan. PayPal, uh, just to Japan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Anyway, he received the money and he sent me this. So awesome. I, I did. Uh, I used uh, this. Um, I, I think I bought it in the ninety. Seven, maybe ninety-eight. Uh, Ishibashi. Uh, oh, cool! It is. Very cool, Ishibashi. Wow, very cool. How did that period of your li- life change when you were so active in noise? Like I said, from that ninety-five to ninety-eight. How, how did that affect the rest of your life, or how did that? What, how, how did that affect your daily life? Uh, in no way. <laughs> no way. Really, zero. No, uh, the. Uh, the, the good thing, the beautiful thing, is that I got in touch with uh, the whole world. Yeah. So the, there was a lot of uh, enthusiasm for that. Uh, I, I, I still you have... Uh, busy. Oh, yeah. I, I was uh, sending and receiving mail continuously. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Every, and, every and day. Recording. Every day. Yes. Uh, recording a lot of stuff. I have some of the, the letters... Cool. Of, of the time. No email then. I, I started yeah. using internet in uh, January 97. Okay. So this is Marco Corbelli. Wow, cool. Mm-mm. One of the last letters, I think. Yeah. He, he said, uh, I'm sending you copies of my latest productions. I hope you like them. Uh, even if I know you lost the interest for uh, for these things, oh. I, I don't know what I told him. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, do you know when that was it, roughly? Which which year? Uh, there's no, no there's no date. Yeah. No, it's like this. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. This one, this one here, I keep it forever. Is from uh, Mikawa. Of wow. incapacitance. Incapacitance paper. This uh, this is moving for <laughs> for me. Uh, thank you also for Dead Body Loves Inhumanities cassette. Uh, it was a tape uh, I didn't even sell. It, it was 15 yeah. uh, copies. And right. I, I sent it to the closest, closest, it was yeah. in Japan, <laughs> closest contacts, most frequent contacts. Yeah. It sounds uh, rather different from former releases, especially in the beginning of Side A. 
It might be because of the instrumentation, I think. It reminded me of Incapacitance cassette release El Shambara Terminosis from Gross, using Termin as a main sound source. Anyway, I think Inhumanities is an excellent work. Wow. That... How did that feel? I wanted to cry. <laughs> yeah. No, really. Uh, the... I think he's one of the masters of noise. Absolutely. One of those who invented noise. Yeah. The, the first uh, incapacitant stuff is early 80s. Yeah. Hijo Kaidan started in the 70s. Right. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely, he did. He's, he's, he's one of the, if not the, gods, fathers of noise. Yes. Also, William Bennett answered once to, to my email. I sent him a tape, a discordance tape, that was more power electronics like mm -hmm. White House. Uh, I didn't even expect a, a reply, but yeah. he sent me an email. I lost that. Uh, I, I didn't print it or, uh, yeah. or make the picture. Uh, just one line. Uh, thank you for your tape that me and Philip enjoyed very much. Ah. Cool. Just, just this. But... Yeah. Uh, It was great. Uh, I have also other stuff here from uh, K2, Kimide, uh, Terdorgan, uh, Yasutoshi of Government Alpha. Uh, he sent me a lot, of, wow. a lot of letters, and once he sent me a lot of pictures. Wow, cool. <laughs> yes. A whole bunch of them? Of, of him uh, playing. Killer. <laughs> wow. Amazing. <laughs> Hey, I don't know uh, which year was that. <laughs> This is crazy. Uh, Great. Someone on the table. <laughs> Great. With uh, playing with weird things. Wow. Yes, yes. Ah, he. Great guy. Dogs. Also dogs. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, he's awesome. And uh, one of the. The craziest was uh, John, John Balistreri of Slogan. Oh, yeah. Uh, every, every letter he sent me was a work of art. Yeah. L look at this, how it's written. Wow. Cool. That's And awesome. uh, in, uh, in this letter, he told me he used to do graffiti in, yeah. uh, in New York City with people from the Beastie Boys and Third Base, uh, the, the early hip hop guys. Wow. Awesome. Incredible. Wow, yes. <laughs> Fuck the world, yeah. Uh, no email can match this. No, absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. That's that's that that stuff belongs in a museum, really. I mean I, I always think about that when I see <laughs> this stuff from people that they have and really I hope some I hope people take care to uh, it looks like you really take care to archive that stuff and, and and people really should make sure that they hold on to it and someday someone has to do something with that stuff if you know mm -mm. it's really historic i i had to throw away some some stuff because uh, really uh, my, yeah, my cool. house was full of packages uh, tapes uh, and stuff like that uh, but i i kept the the best ones and at least at least one letter from uh, from this guy yeah mm -mm. and like you said i mean the email that you got from White House was lost and deleted. So in many ways, it's easier to lose an email or files, digital files, than it is to lose a, a physical item. I mean, in some ways, it's, you know, you can, you can preserve a letter easier. It seems like I'm personally always losing files. <laughs> oh, I don't know where that went. It's on an old hard drive. Oh, the hard drive's broken now. Okay, well, it's gone. Whereas something like that, you can really treat like a, you know, a treasure. There are also some physical items that I can't find anymore, but yeah. uh, I have to look because I'm sure I, I have them. Even some uh, of my old uh, tapes. Uh, I, I was trying to find the uh, horrors of the human body. They mm. came out on CD on yeah. Input Terror, yeah. and I can't find it uh, anymore. Mm. But it, it's somewhere here, so one yeah, day. Sure, somewhere there. You'll find it someday. <laughs> I hope. Because you've had a really amazing run of reissues going on right now, which the world can be thankful oh, yeah. for. And mm -hmm. I want to talk about those in a, in a moment, but how did it feel to have that 
first reissue of Lo-Fi Power at Carnage come out? Ah, it was uh, it was great. Uh, also because uh, I I wasn't uh, doing anything in, in that period. I, I started again because uh, the guys feel uh, and the guys uh, reissued that uh, that CD. Yeah. So I said, why not? Let's let's try something new. Yeah. And uh, I recorded some uh, some noise under the name uh, Oleoresin Capsicum. Yes. And the name was uh, ironic because uh, it's the thing that make uh, peppers hot, yeah. and uh, it's used to do pepper spray and something like that. So it's an incapacitant. Aha. Uh-huh. Hey, two subtle. <laughs> maybe. Cool. Ah, uh, cool. I didn't catch that. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, cool. I did a couple of CDR I released myself. Uh, one tape for uh, for Nicola, Fika Love. Yep. Uh, I don't remember. But ju- just a few few items. Because uh, the name uh, Dead Body Love was starting to to, to be f- boring, I'd say. It's classic, but I understand wanting to. I understand wanting to just do something new at some point. Also, all the the violent stuff, uh, gory images, the medical images, uh, and blood. Uh, well, boring. Yeah. I, I still uh, like it in uh, death metal or in movies. Uh, sure, unless it's not uh, gratuitous. Uh, I, yeah. I'd say. So also in movies, uh, if uh, if you just make a movie to to show gory stuff, blood, like a Serbian film, right? I, I hated that, uh, yeah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it must have a, a meaning. Yeah, I know what you mean. There's so many reissues of your early work coming out, which is awesome. And I've seen you posting the originals. And actually, Sam McKinley sent me. I I asked. I reached out to Sam McKinley before we did the interview. I said, "Do you have any questions for him?" He actually oh. was going to ask the questions about. She said, "How does he get the the sound of the gear?" And I told him, "I was. I'm already asking him that. Don't worry." But he <laughs> sent me a photo of his whole collection. I think he has a complete collection of Dead Body Love. Oh yes, he, he sent it to me also. Yeah, which is incredible. He has a lot of things. He also have that uh, panic system tape uh, that I even uh, quit uh, dubbing uh, at the time because I, I really d- didn't like it. I, uh-huh. uh, I, I think it was um, not good because I use samples that were uh, abused, over overheard. Uh, um, I took them from the. Um, the VHS of uh, Traces of Death. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it was a Mondo movie yes. with, with uh, ugly stuff in it. And it was, for example, uh, Bud Dwyer, the, the guy that yeah. uh, yep. they should. And it, it was stupid because it was heard over and over. It uh-huh. was not an original thing. And in, in, uh, that clip uh, was also used by Jonathan Kennedy in, uh, in a Dead World. Uh, uh, single mini CD, and he made a good use of it because uh, it was uh, basically a, a techno song. Uh huh. S- slow, but it was techno. Tum, tum. Yeah. And the, the snare drum, the sound of the snare, tsh, tsh, the gun. was the was the sound of the <laughs> thirty <gun> five seven. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, so, so I stopped uh, dubbing that tape. I said, "Oh no, it's deleted." And Sam uh, has it. Wow. I don't know. I don't know oh, how many know how. copies of, of that are around. I yeah, he's he's a he's a <laughs> mega fan of, of your work. For yes. sure. That's for sure. Too much. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your label also, Less Than Zero, and, oh. and, and working with other artists at that time. You know, the networking, some of you, maybe some of your favorite artists or some favorite releases you did on the label. Oh, Incapacitants. Mm. Classic. Yeah. It was reissued in a in a box called uh, Boxy Stupid. Yep. Um, I, I had to send uh, back the the master, the tape, because the original uh, that tape he used was ruined. Oh. So it was a uh, noise. It, it's yeah. fun to say it like that because uh, it noise over noise. Yeah. But it was uh, unusable. So I think uh, Lasse Maraug uh, contacted yeah. me. And... Uh, 
because he he was uh, he was doing that uh, and so i i sent the the tape back uh, and they released again and it was great also cool. macronympha yeah uh, richard yeah. ramirez did a yeah. great tape yeah a lot of stuff k2 yeah uh, building of gel that was this japanese uh, noise unit that disappeared yeah. i think yeah never heard uh, from them anymore no it was good because i i also could release my own tapes uh, so it was fun uh, the packaging was copied by slaughter productions yeah uh, the all, all the bags uh, the transparent plastic bags uh, uh, marco corbelli uh, bought them for me i <laughs> paid him uh, and he sent him yeah uh, the tapes, uh, no, the tapes. He he told me where uh, where he, he used to buy the tapes, uh, but uh, all, all the bags, uh, yes, have been cool. bought by by Marco. So they're the real deal. <laughs> uh, no, he, he he did a very beautiful uh, packaging. The following noise video is brought to you by the White Centipede Noise Maniac Circle. For information on the artist and track, check the description of this episode.
Did you ever play live? Uh, no. And I think at this point I never will. No. Um, Could you? No. Because, uh, as I told you, uh, everything I did uh, was made with uh, overdubs. Yeah. So playing, uh, playing live. I don't know, because recently I like mm, something different. Still noise, but more uh, mellow, I say, mm -hmm. more soft. Mm -hmm. uh, I listen to a lot of uh, free improvisation uh, records, uh, and uh, there's crazy stuff in, yeah. uh, in that. Uh, also because there are some ultra-skilled musicians li like... Uh, Evan Parker, uh, who plays sax, uh, Han Benning is a drummer. Yeah. They release uh, a, a lot of, uh, of records that are basically noise, mm -hmm. noise albums. Also, yep. they experiment a lot with electronics. Uh, and I, I like their stuff lately. Uh, the labels, the, my favorite labels are uh, Clean Feed, uh, which is uh, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. uh, Not Two is from Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, Emanem is a classic free improvisation label and uh, Psy Records that, that is run by Evan Parker. Mm -hmm. Also yeah. Zadik, the John Zorn, uh, John Zorn label. That's what, you're, that's what you're listening to these days. You're listening to that kind of stuff. Oh, yes, yes. Lately, yes. Another question from the Maniac Circle was, um, uh, what is your favorite Dead Body Love release personally and why? Mm, I don't know. Uh, maybe if I have to pick one, the uh, the the CDR we did with uh, K2 with Kimi Ide, mm. Traumantra, that came out on Solipsism. That's a great one. Nineteen ninety-eight, and this was uh, crazy. Yeah, we, we traded uh, sounds. Uh, I put sounds on his uh, tracks uh, and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, if I had to pick just one, uh, it would be that, I guess. Also, because uh, the, the others, uh, as I was saying before, uh, they're too different mm, from one another, too, too different. Uh, I didn't have a line to, to follow. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, stupid titles like the one we we saw before uh, and the weird samples uh, around the, the it's no, true no, and, I, and I I regret that the, the, oh, it was too confusing no one regrets no one else regrets it I mean it is true I mean <laughs> I, I, I've been talking about it like it's all this big crunchy stuff but it's true you have a lot of experimentation and, and variety across the labels some mm. of it's more rhythmic almost and loopy um, some of it's almost dark ambient even oh, on yes, the yes. body love, you know. Also, in the very first uh, tape, uh, yeah. uh, prayers for the sick uh, exactly. has been exactly. reissued by Tribe Tapes. Uh, yes, there is a uh, an ambient track. Yeah, exactly. Also, so that because was always, uh, that was always a part of it. It is a. Mm -hmm. Also, because it was what I was doing uh, mainly in '95. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there's also one record, one seven inches that I don't have, and uh, it came out on a Japanese label called Kubitsuri Tapes. I think they, they also did a surely an incapacitant CD. Uh, it uh, exists because someone has uh, has made the the, the profile the, the, of the of the item on Discogs. Mm -hmm. uh, so someone has it. Yeah. There's no picture, unfortunately, uh -huh. because I think it's a pink vinyl or something uh -huh. like that. And I did that with uh, Brutal Truths drummer. Because uh, I, I bought uh, a couple of Brutal Truth 7 inches from him. He had a label called uh, Deaf American. Not mm -hmm. Deaf American or Rick Rubin, but uh, D-E-A-F American. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did uh, uh, Brutal Truth 7 inch and uh, another record that was a split with Spads. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I bought them uh, through him. Uh, I mentioned him and what I was doing. And yeah. He also was uh, recording noise. Cool. He liked the noise very much. So he sent me some sound sources. Uh, I used uh, I used these sources for a, a track. It was two tracks on the uh, on the record. Wow. Uh, I remember one day 
I got this big, very big package. So I, I think it was the my copies of the of the record. Yeah. And uh, the 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 postman asked me for uh, an insane amount of money. Wow. I don't know for customs. Uh, I don't know what happened. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have the the money, so uh-huh. I had sent it back. Oh no! But very very much, a lot of money. Yeah. I don't know what happened. And uh, it was very big, very heavy. So I had to send it back. And I don't have that record. Wow, that so sucks. If someone has a, at least a picture of... Wow. Yeah, that needs to be on earth. That needs to be found. And uh, the label, did the label never contacted you about it or... Um, no. It no. was very, very difficult because uh, he, he couldn't... Uh, communicate uh, very well wow for language problems yeah <laughs> damn uh, it, it it was very very difficult to to communicate with him do you still so, have the master from that no no <laughs> no i um i never made copies of the of the masters yeah. so i have the, the the original tapes only of the the stuff i released on my label yeah and yeah, i use them for for the recent uh, reissues yeah. on uh, horrors of the human body and stuff like that yeah so some someone has uh, that record the one we have on, to find it uh, on discogs <laughs> so so which which albums have been recently reissued can you tell us specifically i know i have a i know i have a, f- a few here but um, it's it's a lot. I mean, it seemed like it started with Input Error. Last year he did Tumors, which came out on Mother Savage, correct? Yes. And then... It, um, it had a horrible <laughs> cover, but uh, I liked that. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and at the time, uh, I loved it. Yeah. So you and asked me, uh, you want to use the original cover? No, 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 no. no. S- something new, something yeah. abstract. The new one is nice too. The new one's very nice. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I like uh, I like all of them. Yeah, and he he also made the artwork for uh, Standing Blood. He did that, and uh, Horrors of the Human Body. He did the the layout, yeah. and I loved it because it's all white, uh, yeah, with black uh, lettering. Mm-hmm. It looks like an early industrial stuff, yeah, uh, early eighties uh, stuff. Uh, the the images uh, are. Uh, AI generated. Really? Yes. And I love them. <laughs> I, I was experimenting with this, uh, I don't even remember the name, Stable Diffusion is uh, one, uh, Mid Journey. Uh, and you, you write the, what, what you want to, to see. Yeah. And, uh, and this system generates an image. Wow. I, the, the one that's on the, the back, uh, I think is great yeah i i asked for a empty hospital room with a with an empty bed and i think it's it's also scary because if you associate it to the to the title yeah you know it's it's a room where uh, something wrong happened right <laughs> crazy that's funny yes. i didn't know that uh, I know also that, I know on, on the cover it. On the cover, there are these weird um, surgical instruments, mm-hmm. but, but but they they roll uh, wrong. Yeah, uh, you you watched it and you. So yes, it's yeah, all, wow, uh, it's funny. That's that's uh, crazy. That's <laughs> that's blending the past with the with the future for sure. Oh yes. <laughs> when what else has been reissued? Uh, Phage Shapes has done a couple. It's done Emetic and. Um, and, and distraction geometry exactly and are mm-hmm. there more planned are there more coming out or i don't know i don't want to say because uh it's better to say it when when i have the okay <laughs> the item in my hand but, but there are, uh, but there are yes, a couple couple things okay are cool. planned is the k2 collaboration one of them no okay that would be great to I hope someone can do that. That would be fantastic. I would like to do something new with him. I, yeah. I got in touch again with uh, Kimi. Um, he, he told me he hasn't recorded anything in, in the last, uh, in, in the more recent uh, weeks, months. But uh, he promised me 
if I record something again, uh, I'll send you. Uh, it would be it would be good. It would be nice. Excellent. Yeah, that would be mm-hmm. nice. And so you are you are active with noise right now. You're doing new stuff. Oh yes, I started recording something new. Uh, the last thing I did was a tape in uh, 2011, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 12, uh, 12 years have passed. Yeah. yeah. And the new and stuff now, you're doing now, is that Dead Body Love or a different name? Oh, no. I, I think I will not use the Dead Body Love name anymore. Yeah. Maybe I'll use my real name. Yeah. Maybe it, it sounds to me a bit uh, pretentious to to use your name uh, it's too artsy but I don't uh, think so I think at this me. point at this point you've earned it <laughs> well yes yeah well, you know it's my name so also because if I want to make something more noisy uh, I'll do it uh, something ambient I'll do it uh, yeah or any other kind of, of thing uh, I, I use those names because all, all the projects were quite different Dead Body Love was straight noise, Drift right. was ambient, and Discordance was uh, something between uh, White House and Brighter Death Now. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But now mm-hmm. you can be a little bit more fluid. Oh, yes. Between the different styles. Speaking of Drift, someone from the Patreon wanted to ask. Um, they said, I would love to know more about Drift, in particular, his inspirations and sound sources. I was introduced to the project via Lasuria's cover of Under on American Babylon, and it blew my mind that the same person who made such brutal sounds as Dead Body Love could do something so understated and sublime. <laughs> um, first, uh, I didn't know that someone made a cover. Yeah. Of a... Do you know Lasuria? No. It's a guy named Jim Mraz, I think, and he releases a lot on hospital productions. It's very, oh. very good, dark ambient, I guess I would call it music. So, yeah, and he did a cover of of, uh, of the track Under hmm. by Drift. How, how can you make a, co- <laughs> a cover of something like that? No, Check but, it out, you have to I, find it. I am curious, uh, yeah. surely. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, I we need should to put you guys in to touch. <laughs> no, also because... Uh, I haven't listened to that tape in uh, more than 20 years or so, I don't remember. But that was very, very minimal yeah. sound. So, so yeah, it, it was something shapeless. <laughs> it, it has some chimes. It has some ding. It has like a kind of a... Oh. It sounds like some chimes or bells being hit kind of at some point. Oh, it was surely something from the, 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 the CD with the special effects. Yeah. I was talking before, surely. Special effects CD. Yes. You were, I, so I put you were them in a lot of sound source. Mm, for for Drift, uh, I, I think uh, those uh, those tapes on Slaughter Productions are, are, are all made uh, with uh, with these uh, these sound sources. So a, any kind of of sound it could be anything. And uh, I, I didn't use distortion, of course, but a lot of reverb and, and delays. Mm-hmm. So the sounds, uh, really, um, anything, any any kind of, of sound. But uh, all from these CDs, eh, I, I didn't uh, use a field recording so, or something like that. Oh, so they were all so, from these, I, these sound effects CDs? I, I don't know if I ever used... Uh, actual instruments on uh, on drift mm-hmm. maybe in, in something i release on my on my label i i use some percussion cool. sample there eh, of course yeah Mm-mm. um i i need to to listen to to this cover uh, there's another italian band that released a, a cover of a dead body love track yeah uh, but I never, I never heard it. Uh, they are uh, Macelleria Mobile di Mezzanotte. Okay. They are on all the Europa Cafe. Cool. And they, they released the record that was all uh, covers of classic Italian industrial uh, tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I can, no. I can understand covering drift, but covering dead body love, that's pretty hard, I think. <laughs> uh, you just make noise. Uh. <laughs> you mentioned uh, Old Europa Cafe. Can you tell about your working relationship with, with that label and, and its uh, impact on you or at oh, that time? Um, he released the... the uh, lo-fi power carnage tape right that has become a classic tape yeah and also one drift uh, tape and uh, an lp uh, split with uh, uh, discordance with uh, death bile with yeah. jonathan kennedy yeah. on uh, white vinyl very beautiful yeah the cover sucks uh, it's uh, ugly i did uh, the cover <laughs> yeah no, I, I'm very self-critical uh, with the yeah, stuff like that. It, it, it was a, it's a past. another picture I I took from the internet of a rape or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It, it was all blurred, like it was a um, malfunctioning television. Right, so it right, was black right. and white, uh, all confused. But if you, if you look at it uh, from a distance, uh, you see what it is. So yeah. I made that, that cover. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Anyway, a, a lot of things I did as discordance I don't like anymore. Tell me about discordance more. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was... Uh, I had to pick another name because uh, the, the, the thing was quite different from, from the Body Love and Drift. Mm. Uh, it was a crossover between Death Industrial and Power Electronics, uh, uh, White House, Brighter Death Now, something like that. And uh, some, uh, some of the tracks uh, had uh, lyrics. Yeah, something by that you. I... Was that by you? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was saying a lot of, of stupid stuff. Uh, <laughs> I was young, <laughs> angry at the world. Yeah. No, the funny thing is, uh, I'm angrier now. Yeah. Uh, no, I think uh, now I hate people more than ever, thanks to social networks. Uh, yeah. Really, they're one of the main reasons for uh, for this. Uh, but uh, I laugh at it now, so right. I don't get mad anymore. Were you mad back and, then, or was it was it more fun? No. It, it's better now. So yeah. At the time, uh, I was really, really mad, angry at people. Yeah. yeah. But if you if you listen to that stuff now, it's, uh, it's a bit ridiculous. Uh, one uh, one tape that, that I still like very much. Uh, I think it was my best release as Discordance. Um, was a tape named Ripper that came out uh, on uh, Labyrinth Recordings mm -hmm. in New York. The one that released the emetic uh, right. tape, and that was very very fun. I did it in a couple hours, <laughs> I think. Sure. And I took some um, some sentences from uh, Jack the Ripper's uh, writings. Yeah, he, he sent. Uh, he used to send letters. Right. Uh, so basically, I was just screaming these words. Uh, yeah. Over, uh, over noise. And I use the Casio keyboard yeah. for that. Yeah. And other things. I, I remember I use a rubber band on a microphone. Cool. And I was playing. Dong, 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 dong. <laughs> and yes, yes, stuff like that. We, with all the effects, uh, yeah. all the sounds were very, very scary. All distortion. And I, I like that one. Other things, the split with uh, that pile was another another thing. No vocals on that. Uh, there were uh, drums, pro programmed drums, of yep. course. Uh, a synth. I remember I I took this synth uh, from a um, from a friend. Uh, give me that. I, yeah. I took that. I went. Uh, I went home. I recorded the track in one night, uh, and the morning I, I returned the. Uh, yes, yes, I was doing that. Uh, yeah, because I, I had a that, lot of ideas. It's great that so much of your work, which sounds so heavy and dark and all this, and your know, power electronics especially, could, 
everyone thinks they have to have you know a real big analog synth ms20 wasp whatever you know mm-hmm. it's great that you were using that little casio <laughs> <laughs> and a rubber band yes. you know yes yes that's also a lot of feedback oh, yeah um, uh, one of my favorite records at the time was uh, dedicated to Peter Curtin by White House. Yep. Uh, that is basically just uh, William Bennett screaming in a, in a microphone and nothing yeah. else. Yeah. White House were the greatest uh, power electronics band. I saw them live. Uh, they were uh, unbelievable. Which they year? Used no, no videos. I think it was uh, 2007, mm-hmm. but I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, no videos. Something I don't like of these kind of bands is they use videos. Right. I think it's just because, uh, I don't know, maybe they don't think that the music, the, the sounds alone can, uh, can speak, can be enough. Right. So they play these videos. So they use no videos. That's a bonus for me. Yeah. And they they are crazy. They they were two comedians. Yeah. They They're started all, all serious. They, they used just the laptops yeah. at the time. Yeah. So uh, I remember there were mm, curtains. The curtains opened. They started loud, ex- extremely loud. Yeah. Uh, it was full of people. Mm. Uh, they they were uh, at their uh, tables with the uh, with the laptops serious they didn't uh, change expression or anything and slowly slowly they they started to to make a mess yeah they wore uh, shirts yeah. they ended up almost naked yeah and they were screaming at the people yeah uh, they were worshiping the amplifiers they yeah. they, they were, <laughs> Mad guys, because uh, they they used a lot of uh, controversial subjects, uh, sure. but uh, th- there was irony in all, uh, very intelligent. In all of that. They're very intelligent. Absolutely. And also, they they did um, bird seed, uh, wriggle like a fucking eel. Yeah, it's and amazing. At, at one point, I turned around to the audience while that track was playing, yeah. and and people. I can't say they were dancing, but but something like that. Yeah. Because it, it has this pulse. Uh, yeah. So you you could see that uh, fuck is White House. <laughs> no, it, yeah, yeah, that's an incredibly powerful powerful track. I and uh, uh, some some people don't like the the latest uh, uh, CDs they've done, but I love them. Yeah. I think it's great. They've been uh, the, the greatest band in power electronics. Biggest influence on Discordance? Mm. Oh, the Call Me the Industry label, mm. I'd say. Anything. Yeah. And uh, Karmanik w- was a fan of my, of my stuff. When cool. uh, the, um, I did... Uh, a CD called uh, Supremacy on crowd control activities. Mm-hmm. The, it was the label. Uh, so he um, he told me what people uh, was saying uh, about that uh, that CD, and Karmanik loved it. Cool. Uh, Peter Anderson of Raison d'être, he he told him something like, uh, "Why did you release this garbage? <laughs> it's trash." <laughs> you are uh, pretty private guy you said this was the first time we're seeing your face i think probably anyone yes did, did, in these times when you were so active in the scene i mean you were exchanging with so many people via letters did you also meet people in person once in a while or travel to see people or people or anything like that or were you, i mean it, italy is you know if you're not coming through italy if you're in a small town it's hard to meet people i suppose no i only met uh, marco corbelli mm-hmm. And uh, I think uh, one day um, we we arranged something with Paolo Bandera of uh, Sigillo Mess uh, and uh, she Retina Stimulants. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I don't remember what happened, but we didn't meet. Also, John Balistrerio's slogan 
was mm. visiting uh, Florence, I was in Firenze. No. Uh, let's meet, let's meet. Uh, I gave him my phone number, but I never heard from him. Oh. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe yeah. he couldn't use uh, his phone uh, in yeah. Italy, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So something like that. It was very different yeah. from uh, from today. Yeah. So I don't know what happened. Um, no, I, I think uh, I think I met only only Marco. Okay. Wow. I, I I saw someone live, but of course I didn't interact with them. Yeah. With genocide organ, uh, brighter that now. Yeah. Um, but uh, I. I didn't have a chance to to talk to them. Are you still in touch with people via via email or letters these days? I got in touch again with Kimiide, with K2. Yep. And the others on uh, on Instagram. Uh, yeah. But nothing nothing else. Hmm. But well, uh, le let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, I think I started the... recording things again, so Yeah, exactly, you're recording things again and the, and the reissues I think is is a really important oh, thing. Yes. I'm really happy that's happening. Um, what what was it that started this big wave of reissues? Was it your idea? Was it someone else's idea? I mean, all of a sudden, oh, there's there's so much surely, activity. Surely not my ideas. <laughs> um, it was a uh, Phil from Tronics uh, who yeah. did the, the new reissue that's of, right uh, yeah they, they, re, they re reissued the reissue a, a couple of years mm -hmm. ago that's right yeah yes because of the the first reissue sold out uh, in a in a few in a few time and yeah. also the second yeah you told me that it sold yeah. out in a week Absolutely. <laughs> something like that yeah and on on twitter when i was still on twitter um i i was checking his uh his account and uh he said that with the picture uh, out now, dead body love, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, clipping the industrial rap band on Sub Pop. Uh, I don't know who of the three runs the, the Twitter account. Uh, he wrote, uh, oh, uh, reserve one copy for me. I can't miss that. So I oh, said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. From clipping, yeah. William <laughs> Hutton. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah, he told him. Man. Oh, thank you. Uh, I am uh, Gabriel. Thank you very much. I know you. I yeah. like uh, your records. And he said, no, no, thank you. You <laughs> have been uh, one of the greatest inspiration for us. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's one of many, you know. I mean, that's really, you can know that your work, even if people haven't directly heard it, some of the, gen the younger generation the foundations you laid with that sound, which were really built upon, are really, really hugely influential. And I think that's going, I mean, people know that, but I think now with all the re new reissues coming out, that's going to be really great for people to have the chance to hear a lot of that stuff that was very hard to get. Because I know I'm a, oh, yes. I'm a big fan of Dead Body Love, but I don't have that much of your older stuff because I don't have, I could never find it. And, and you know, I have, so I'm really thankful for these reissues. And that that's going to really go out to a lot of people. And I'm, you know, I'm carrying it. I have a distro here. I'm carrying it there. And it's going to, it's, it's people, people want it right away. People mm -hmm. sell it really and fast, Also the, so. the, the old tapes, uh, uh, we're talking of second half of the nineties. So exactly. maybe the, the younger guys uh, didn't have a chance to, oh, exactly. to get them. Uh, yeah, exactly. You've shown so many amazing artifacts already. You know, the, the letters and the tapes that you have. You said mm -hmm. nothing can replace, no email can replace that. Just the same, I think, with digital streaming music. Mm -mm -mm. It's a, it's a fun, it has its function for testing things out, I think, but it doesn't ever replace that. Yes. No, streaming is uh, useful because uh, you have a subscribe, subscription to Amazon Music, a new album uh, comes out, you can listen yeah. to it the same day. Uh, they suggest uh, if you like this, uh, you could like. Uh, I found yeah. I found some uh, new stuff I didn't know about. Uh, yeah. But I need to have the the item in my hand. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And absolutely. CD, I think is the best. Now it's very cheap. Yeah. To, to make, to a, make CD a CD, is, it, CDs are about as it, about they cost about the same amount to make as a tape nowadays. So as a big collector as you are, um, I imagine your your noise collection 
must also be pretty amazing. And I like to ask everyone I interview what their top five noise releases of all time are. I will show and you. I'm especially excited to see what you have <laughs> ready here. <laughs> Just wait. The, the first one will be a, a bit like cheating because uh -huh. it's a compilation. Uh -huh. But I hear Gabriele's top five noise releases of all time in the extended segments of this interview at patreon.com slash white centipede noise. What else have you got coming up, Gabriele, that you can tell us about? Anything else? That oh, I don't future know. Future plans? Future future plans? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, I recorded these new things. And basically just... Uh, digital uh, noise uh, very abstract uh, not uh, always uh, aggressive uh, or loud so i think i'll make people listen to to these tracks uh, and let's see what happens now it's very different from uh, 95 yeah. with the uh, computers uh, you can do everything yeah everything you you want the, the problem is to find what to do to, yeah. to have the right uh, inspiration, uh, the right ideas, because really now you can uh, do everything. You can plug a guitar, uh, you can get uh, very realistic drums. Uh, yeah. You know, um, sometimes I hear, I hear on YouTube uh, uh, death metal bands that are really actually are one person that plays everything. Right. Uh, so crazy. AI. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, it went uh, well. I was uh, I was scared at first to to do this, but we've been talking for two hours. Two hours. Yeah. Great. It's great. I no, did it. So, my, so my English my English Your teacher English great, would be man. proud if English she were still good. alive. Yeah. <laughs> no, your, your English is is excellent, and uh, the, the pronunciation is not excellent. <laughs> We all we understand what you're saying, and that's that's okay. all that matters. So um, I want to see the comments of uh, Americans and uh, English guys. No, man, <laughs> they'll be thank the comments will be thanking you, man. What you've done for noise and for music is really huge. I really thank you. You've made you know even if you didn't know it at the time. I hope you know it now because you made a huge impact on. The genre of noise, the world of noise, industrial, <laughs> dark music, etc. Thank you. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. That was really, really oh, it was fantastic. Fun. Yeah. That was a for history lesson. And um, I can't wait to see what you're doing new. I can't wait to hear more reissues. I can't wait to, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. stay in touch with you. And Oh, yes. And uh, see Anytime. where see what comes next. So, Gabriele, thank you so so much. Thank you. Thanks to everyone who will watch this uh, episode. You, I want to read what uh, what people say <laughs> of anything, uh, of course. Okay, man. Well, thank you so much, and take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Ciao. <laughs> Go to patreon.com slash white centipede noise to hear more in the extended segments of this interview. Available to all who support this podcast, five euros per month or more.